This show is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. Visit betterhelp.com slash Padilla because sometimes existing is exhausting. Pushing in and I'm like, I feel that. And you have to be awake. Well, I don't know if I had to be, <laughs> but I was. My name's Anthony Padilla and I spent a day with Markiplier to uncover the truth about how he went from financial desperation to amassing over 32 million subscribers and an unfathomable amount of money. He'll reveal how the immense pain, anger, and loss that he experienced in his childhood continues to shape who he is today. And he'll address how his work ethic is driven by acceptance of his inevitable death. Hello, Mark. Hello, Anthony. What do you think is the biggest misconception about you? There's still people think that I cry in every video. Well, because there's a meme of you crying? Exactly, because yeah. in, the, in those videos in the past, those videos got a lot of views. So that becomes the image of what people think that Exactly, are. so people think like they only saw that video yeah. and then they're like, oh, this guy only cries. And, like to me, it's funny because <laughs> I just the crying me meme pops yeah. up all over the place. So I don't really care what people's misconceptions are because they don't know me and they never will. Some people might say, that's easy for you to say, you have over 32 million subscribers. Mm -hmm. So many people love you and you just innately know that. The other side of that is that for strangers to say things positively about me, I don't take that to heart either. As much as I wanna say that like my fans know me because I share as much as possible about myself, they only see a window of me through their screen. In a similar way, even if they're singing my praises, saying I'm the greatest ever, some of that'll go to my head maybe <laughs> a little bit. But in all honesty, I don't look at that either. You said that you were shaped by pain. What kind of things did you experience and how did it shape you? Pain transforming in my life was when I was in the hospital. I discovered my appendix is about to explode. The nurse literally at my bed. Your appendix is about to burst. Also, you have a tumor, but don't worry about that right now. And that's exactly how they told me. I'm trying to reel with the understanding of like, I had a tumor. Like that not supposed to happen. It didn't hit me until I got the biopsy. They had me lay down in a CT and then they start stabbing me, literally. The big metal thing was a biopsy like probe that had a little grabber at the end of it. And then I'm in the machine and they're just like pushing in and I'm like, yeah, I feel that. And you have to be awake. Oh yeah. Well, I don't know if I had to be. <laughs> well, they're like, sure, oh, well, let's have them be awake for yeah, this. And it was in that moment that all that hit me and it was like, oh shit. This pain is not the worst thing in the world. This mm. pain is necessary. This mm. pain is actually essential so to me it, getting better. I've had a, lot, a few of those realizations in my life. One of the more recent ones, do you watch Kirk's Kazakh? Kirk's Kazakh. Kirk's Kazakh. They had this video talking about the, the timeline of your life and how much time you spend with your parents. And they were saying like, by the time you're 18, you've spent like 90% of your time with your parent. And to a lot of people hearing that, that sounds really bad. My dad died when I was 18. When I heard that, that was the most comforting thing I've ever heard in my life because it meant I got 90% of the time that I would have had with my dad. Mm -hmm. Perspective is everything because if I didn't know that, if I didn't go my whole life without ever knowing that, I would have gone the rest of my life wishing for a little more time with my dad. That was the most beautiful thing that I could have ever learned that day or that year. Or That was wonderful. Loss or pain really paints a picture of what you need to do. And it's like, I am okay with pain because it's not the end, you know? I know the pain won't kill me, and I've been through a lot of pain, physically and emotionally, but none of it will stop me. Every time I try to push myself to do something more and bigger, the pain and the, the hard work, like they're synonymous. Life mm. can be pain, but the, all that pain means that there's something better at the end of it. Mm. There's a payoff to it. What was your childhood like? Tumultuous. Lots of ups and downs, a roller coaster? Except for the fun. Just the terror. I don't know, I was a kid playing in the woods eating mud. <laughs> you ate mud? Did you, did you eat mud? There's nothing wrong with eating mud. There's really not. There's nothing wrong with you eating mud. You get lots of minerals, not yeah. too many. Exactly. What about bullying? I got bullied a lot before puberty. After puberty, uh. I got my muscles, so I stopped <laughs> being bullied. They were like, this guy could kick my ass? Oh. What were you bullied about? Oh, being Korean. Kids aren't very smart, so they pick the one thing that they can yeah. find, right? That affected me a lot more than I realized. I believe the term is called like internalized racism. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so you start to hate the things about yourself. Mm. And I hated those things about myself and because you, I got bullied about it. You believed that it was something wrong with you. Exactly. Me as a kid, I didn't know being Korean was a good thing. So like not a lot of self-confidence, not like knowing anything about myself that I could look 
positively on. You said that you were a very angry teenager. Oh yeah. A lot of times I remember coming, driving home from school and just punching the urban and I wouldn't know why. It was like just this urge to release energy yeah. or what? Just like either I was frustrated at something that happened in school or relationship bullshittery that doesn't matter. It's just like I was angry. And I was but like, it matters so much at the time. It does. It was everything at the time. I remember this one time I was driving home like so pissed off and I was I think I was crying. There was this other car that pulled up next to me at a stoplight. He leaned out his window. He's like, <laughs> okay. and I'm crying. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> you didn't have any other way to express it. Pretty much. Or I didn't know how. Like the thing, you grow up in this weird fleshy body and it does weird chemical things and you, yeah. you don't understand how to respond. Sometimes. Emotion? What the f I know, right? Look at yeah. my penis. <laughs> That's an emotion too. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> You just told the internet to look at your penis. No, that was not a command. That oh. was an interrogative statement. I don't know what that means, it was but a, it sounds right. Is, no one questioned it. <laughs> but that was one of the first things that I really started to try to take control of myself is like my anger because I really did not like where that led me. And at that point in my life, when as a kid do you look within yourself and try to understand who you are? Never, it's all about the outside. Exactly. And so really just, this took years, right? Mm -hmm. Years and years of just like trying to understand what made me angry, why I got angry, how I responded to anger how to stop that from happening. Mm. But if you're interested in hearing what Mark and I have to say without all this censorship, we've got an uncensored podcast version of the show down in the description, which you should click right the now. And this episode is sponsored by Surfshark VPN. Surfshark is an app and a browser extension that lets you place your computer or your phone anywhere in the world and allows you to access the internet as if you were there instead. Sure, some people might call it accessing blocked content, but I like to call it seeing what they don't want you to see. Why don't they want me to see it? So I'm gonna paint a picture for you, okay? So listen up. Let's say you just got done watching In Space with Markiplier and you're craving more sci-fi and you thirst for Interstellar, but it's not available in your country. Location change to Japan and voila, more space in your face. I hate that that rhymed, I deeply apologize. And Surfshark also adds an extra layer of security when you're online to keep all your passwords and data safe on an unlimited number of devices with just one account. I implore you to use the code ANTHONY to get 83% off plus three extra months for free. And they offer a 30 day money back guarantee. So the only risk is that you end up liking it a little too much and you can't exist without it. Not too bad, right? Visit surfshark.deal slash Anthony to learn more. The link is down in the description or you could just scan the QR code that's on screen. Go support them, support us and surf the web safely from anywhere. And I'd also like to thank our sponsor BetterHelp for their continued partnership. If you've been keeping up with this series, you know that therapy has been really beneficial in shaping who I am today by allowing me to have empathy for my younger self and therefore understand who I am today more but therapy can be customized to whatever's right for you and can be useful in providing tools to help with motivation or feelings of depression, anxiety, stress, insecurity, or whatever else you might need. BetterHelp has been continuing to improve throughout the years and they screen all their therapists to ensure that they have experience and that they're certified and licensed. And they provide customized therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist so you don't have to see anyone or even speak over the phone if that's not something that you're comfortable with. As so many of you probably found out by now, therapy can be expensive and the price of finding a therapist that you like and that you connect with can be overwhelming which is why BetterHelp offers a more affordable alternative to in-person therapy, where you can start communicating with your therapist in less than 48 hours. So thank you again to BetterHelp, who are giving I Spent a Day with viewers and listeners of the podcast 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash Padilla. That's betterhelp.com slash Padilla. Now, back to the world of Markiplier. You told me that your father helped guide your morality. In what ways did he establish that? My dad was very much the kind of guy that never did anything half-ass, always do the right thing, admit if you're wrong, own your mistakes in every aspect. That was who he was. He never sat me down and taught me those lessons. It was just like, I saw him live that. Sounds like you're describing yourself. Well, that, that's what I'm saying. Like he, I'd like to think I embody that mm -hmm. because that's just, that's just who he was. If he ever had a grievance with someone or like, an argument with someone, he would let it go the next day. I think it's just because he realized what a poison it is to hold hate. And so when you have this thing that's holding you back from furthering your journey and discovering yourself, you suddenly freeze mm -hmm. in everything you do. 
What drove you to first start expressing yourself through YouTube? Just complete lack of control in my life. I realized I was not accountable for anything. You can still fail no matter what you do. So you might as well try something that you really are passionate about and care about because at least you'll fail at something that you tried. I saw these people that were doing things live action with videos and like making sketches and all that stuff. That's what I wanted to do at first. I didn't know how to hold a camera. I didn't know how to assemble a shot. I did something that I could do, which was make a less, but I can play a video game. I can talk kind of, and I can, I can record and upload that. I wouldn't be here if it weren't for you guys being here first, you know? I literally, physically, would not be sitting in this chair right now if you hadn't uploaded videos. Uh, maybe it's the side of me that literally cannot take praise. I when when people, someone says pra <laughs> says praise to me, I'm just like, sorry, what? You had an impact, whether you like it or not. <laughs> you did. I'm here. The horrible things I do in the future. <laughs> oh. I am not responsible for anything Mark does. Maybe it's some defense mechanism of mine, but I'm like, you would have found your way eventually, regardless of the influence that you did find. Maybe, maybe not. Yeah. That's, that's the thing, you'll never know. Yeah. But I am here and I'm here for those reasons. So I can only be grateful for that. This was the first time that you felt like you were taking some control in your life. You were doing something that you wanted to do, something that you sought after. Changed everything overnight. I uploaded one Let's Play of a whole game, Amnesia at the Dark Descent, and then I made a compilation video of it. Mm. Because I had seen other people make this compilation of scare reactions for Amnesia, and I was like, I wanna do something like that. I, I really truly don't think there's anything wrong with people emulating art. Every like, single piece of art is influenced by another piece of art. It's derivative, everything. The human experience yes. is derivative. That yes. doesn't mean it's lesser because of it. That means it's, it's greater. It's necessary for evolution. Absolutely. Yeah, yes. you have to build on what comes before. Mm -hmm. And I'm using this to justify my shitty reaction compilation <laughs> that I made. It is just as good as the other one. That reaction compilation got posted to Reddit and it got like third on the video tab, which is like gold. I got 100,000 views. I got 200 subscribers. 100,000 views. Quite a- Translated to 200 yeah, subscribers. Yeah, that was a sad thing, right? But at the time, like it was incredible. I, yeah. I was, I remember my mom had dragged me to church and I was sitting in there and my phone started going. You got all your notifications on. Comments, subscribe, yeah. like everything yeah. was on. So my phone just was, was like shaking violently and glowing bright. Well, that kind of puts it into perspective. Yeah. That's how many people- Oh yeah. It was. Exactly. It's hundreds of people that subscribed to my channel. The fact of the matter was, what really drove me from that moment was not about the people responding to it, the things that they were saying. It was the fact that I made something that was successful. It was yeah. the first thing that I had made that was worth someone's time. When did you first start experiencing big success, constant success? Five Nights at Freddy's was definitely a big moment. That would definitely be the moment that like things just really took off. Yeah. But before that, it was a strong, steady growth because I just couldn't get enough of it. You know, the, the memes of me crying all the time. <laughs> what were you crying about in the actual- What I was crying about is like, someone made a compilation of fan reactions thanking me for making content. The reason it was so sad is because I had this realization when I was watching that, that I would never be able to have a personal connection. Because you were too big? I got too successful. That is something that people don't realize how much it affected me because not a lot of people have that same connection with mm -hmm. the audience they have. I literally, grew up as a human being with these people and to know that I would never be able to have the kind of connection I had when I started, that was devastating to me. Get into Unis Honest. Can you explain what the concept is for anyone? Sure, else sure. Unis Honest no longer exists. It was a project that Ethan, me, and Amy, my girlfriend, where we uploaded a at least 10 minute live action video every day for 365 days. And at the end of that year, we deleted the channel live and it's gone. And it is now gone. That might be the most profound thing I ever make in my life. Even the idea of Unis Anus. Unis Anus. Anus, sorry. No, I don't even know. I was just trying not to say anus personally. I don't think we even are pronouncing it. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, it's close Ooh, enough. Anus, anus. The idea of it is so profound. This idea of, I am going to put all of my energy into something because I know it is finite. Do you feel like that idea translates into the way that you think about life? Has it impacted the way you think about life or has the way you think about life impacted that? One thing that I also learned from the moment that I was on that table getting stabbed in the back is that my life was finite, mm. period. I did not know if that tumor was cancerous. I have had a heart attack. I could have died. Like so many things in my life have been little wake up calls. And for me, the greatest purpose of my life is to make stuff 
make art, put it out in the world and see what I can do before mm -hmm. I die. When it comes down to making videos, for me, it's not just about the videos. It's about leaving a mark on the world before I go. No pun intended. Oh, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to see what's going to inspire the next generation of content mm -hmm. creators. Inspiration is the most valuable currency that humanity mm -hmm. will ever have. It's so hard to define, it's so hard to capture, it's lightning in a bottle, but it's neural pathways. Exactly, it's a whole, it's, it's just little electrical. But this just can be turned into a real thing that makes someone else's brain go and then they will come up with something else and it just echoes. But I, I love making things that people feel. Mm -hmm. Like with Una's Honest, when it ended, people felt Oh yeah, it. people yeah. felt it. When you feel it, that goes beyond language. Words are translations of feelings. Yeah. We try to express those feelings to each yeah. other. But when you feel something, that's like a common human experience. When people like look at something that I make and they feel a sense of wonder, when they feel a sense of sadness, when a profundity. Words can never accurately convey a feeling a struggle. I mean, they get close. It goes so much deeper than that. And we're all learning about little factual things with just a couple words to describe such deep, profound feelings that you had to be there to fully understand. And that's kind of a similar idea with Unis Honest. That's what we like to say whenever someone's like, ooh, what's Unis Honest? You had to be there. You had to be there. <laughs> How did your financial situation change? going from childhood to the way you live now. When I was a kid, you know, we didn't have a lot of money, but it didn't really matter, you know. The most memorable Christmas I had yeah. was not one where we had a million presents, it was one where we had one present, and it was a box of StarCraft. And I remember my dad was incredibly sad that he was not able to get us presents. Our tree was like a little, little, like three foot fake tree. And to him, it was that, to me, most memorable. But going from that to then growing up and our financial situation got stable, we were totally fine through Teenage years, you know, and then college. Outside of campus, they had a free promotion for a free pizza if you signed up for a credit card. <laughs> that should explain my spiraling debt that I got into. You in got college. your free pizza? Oh yeah. How did it, how did it taste? Bad. <laughs> Cold. <laughs> it was not worth it. Just some Chuck E. Cheese pizza. Free pizza. Here's a twenty-five hundred dollar credit limit. <laughs> have fun, college kid. Don't buy booze. <laughs> Don't buy booze. When I was legal age. Up to twenty-one. One. Years, years of old. age. I'm going into like very bad debt. Couldn't even afford an apartment anymore. Moved in back in with my mom, medical bills, all this nonsense. Number one, my brother actually paid off my credit card. Like before I even did YouTube, he actually was the one that told me about Let's Plays. Then I was able to pay off my debt and then I was able to uh, buy a car. I got my own apartment. And from that moment on, when I had my own apartment, I was pretty much set. Like what else did I want? I had my health at the time and yeah. freedom. Like I couldn't want anymore. And then I got a lot more money. Like people don't understand just how much money falls out of the YouTube bucket. Like it's unfair. I'm, I'm not trying to brag or anything. I've wrestled with this a lot over what? the years. Just how much money I suddenly fell into. It messed with me. I knew what it was like to not have. And then suddenly I had way more than I ever needed. And I was like, what do people even do with this? So what do much. you do? I donate to charity. <laughs> okay, so you lot. give a lot of it away. A lot you got too much of it, let's get some of this out of here. Don't get me wrong, I have a nice house, I have a nice car. I'm gonna be comfortable the rest of my life unless I make some real bad decisions. <laughs> <laughs> you have an unfathomable amount of money, is what you're telling me. Yes. You don't hear many people openly say that, you know? It's true. <laughs> people know how many views I get. My channel has had 17 billion views. 17 billion 17 views. billion views in my channel. That is, that's insane. Yes, that's what I'm saying. That's unfathomable, like I absolutely know. unfathomable. I know. Especially when you get $1 per view. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think you would be like if you suddenly were to lose it all? I'd love that actually. <laughs> Wait, why? I love the idea of starting over. <laughs> really? Yeah, actually, yeah. Does that mean that you would make different choices and you want to do it again? No, it's an opportunity to do something else. Like, imagine suddenly YouTube exploded. What I'm left with is everything I've learned since that moment. Mm. And I still have that. And I am confident enough in myself because of how much I push myself through that I would be able to face anything and I would find something else creatively to do or something completely different that I would be passionate about. Does that make you navigate life with a sense of freedom? You're not beholden to this idea that things need to be this way and they need to always be this way? I mean, no, if you, oh, I mean, I was in a hole for four years. You, you couldn't even reach out to me yeah, in four no. years. So no, I, I wouldn't say I have uh, freedom now or feel a sense of freedom. 
um, because I know that probably won't happen. So I don't mm. count on that. Mm. Um, what I do have now is a sense of responsibility mm. of I do have what I have and I do have this audience. And it's just like, that's because I wanted it to be great to mm. make something that people could really, really enjoy. It sounds like you devote so much of your time and energy into these things. Yeah. What is it that drives you to give every single thing you do all of you? Cause I love it. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Uh, there's, there's so many times when people come up to me, it's like, I've got a great business idea. All you gotta do is put your name on it. <laughs> yeah. Tell your audience about it. Yeah. You'll make millions. And I say, uh, no, thank you. Mm -hmm. I'll go on. Uh, because what's the point? Uh, if I'm making something, it's because I really love it and I really believe on it. In some ways, is that a curse? Because you end up giving so much more of you, so much more of your time and energy than you had planned on initially. Yeah, it'll probably kill me someday. Literally. Yeah, probably. You think that overwork may be the thing that takes you out? Well, overwork has already tried, <laughs> you know? Do you think that stress has contributed to your health issues that you've experienced? Absolutely, 100%. I don't and have time to really like exercise as much as I should, eat as well as I should, make the good choices that I should. You know, my social relationships suffer because of it. I say a lot of these things and I speak really positively about it, but like I would not want anyone to follow in my footsteps too closely because it has cost me a lot. You've said that you're you don't feel like you're a very good friend. Is that because of your work ethic? What'll happen is like people will text me and I'll see it on my phone. I'll be like, I gotta get that. And then I'll do something else. And you know, it's not even like I'm always working all the time. Yeah. I'm not a machine. I, I, I take breaks all the time. I play video games on my own, but it's like, I'm selfish in a weird way. Either I'm working on something that I wanna work at or I am justifying not interacting with my friends because I'm taking a break from all the work that I put into my own project. There's only so much in the my day pie that I can split up for these various different things. And so mm. when it comes down to friendships, it's like trying to make time for that is, is difficult. Most addictions in many ways are a distraction from something else. They are filling a void mm. that's within you. Yeah. Do you feel like your addiction to work is Feeling any a sudden sense of purpose when you had none before as much as I say like you need to be able to let go and move on I am locked into that feeling mm -hmm. I, I don't want to let that go I would love to do this till the day I die if I suddenly was unable to do anything that I wanted to do that would terrify me and is that a, a sense of purpose or is it a sense of value that you place on yourself. I'm only as good as how much I positively impact the world. It's not one of those things where there's one answer. It's like, yes, I have a sense of purpose. Yes, I have a, a standard I hold myself to. And yes, my self-worth is pretty much nailed to my ability to put my ideas into the world. Because it all stems from within. I see my own self-worth in what I make. And that's why I always have to push myself to make more. I have to see this growth in myself because it's also never good enough. I don't look back critically on my past projects and being like, that was terrible, mm -hmm. but it wasn't good enough. But also, you know, my life isn't in shambles. I, I, I think I have better control, a little bit better than I was. That's why I reached out to you. And yeah. I'm starting to like put my head up in the world and be like, I'm alive. Considering you put all of yourself into your work, where do you draw the line between Mark and Marketplace. I try to make sure that I remember that when you put out content, you are drawing from the well of your life and you are pouring it into a video, right? You scoop out a little more and you pour there. And eventually the well runs dry. You don't have any more life that you have lived that is going to be new to put into a video. But you will not be any more of a human. You will not have lived more life. Even if time has passed, yeah. you have not done new things. You have not seen new things. That's why I think out is because they realize this kind of like emptiness inside of them. The purpose for which they were drawing from the well is kind of like lost. And now they're kind of like wondering like, I did this before and it was working great for so long. Yeah. Why is it broken now? And they just need to go live life. They need to learn. They need to have experiences. They need to move. They need to go do things. Mm -hmm. and so with me, I, I, I try to like conquer that by trying a bunch of different things. I do these interactive things. I do oh. sketches. I do gaming videos. I do shit post videos. My number one most viewed video is Meow, which yeah. has 350 million views. You hate it? I hate that it's so successful. <laughs> I don't hate it, it's bullshit, and I knew it when I made it. <laughs> but I made a big show, watch that one 350 million times. Hey, you have no idea how many people are inspired by Meow. Their entire lives are different because of it. That's a bad future. That's a dark <laughs> multiverse over there. You've said that existing itself 
doesn't mean that you have a debt that you need to pay to the universe. You exist whether or not you let yourself be stressed out about those ideas, about what it means to exist. Damn! Yeah? yeah. I said that? Some profound shit. But what you were basically getting at is that just because you exist doesn't mean that you constantly owe someone or something, something about you. Existing is enough. You don't owe the world to make anything. Like as much as I'm like, yes, make content, make what's in your mind or reality, you don't have to. No one has to. No one's gonna make you. And, and it's, it's just like what I was saying is like, you can drift through life and you will get from beginning to end. For me, I found purpose in trying to steer myself through that current of life. I think that's important for people to realize is that they have the capability to do that, not the obligation. Mm -hmm. But also no one is forcing them. Mm -hmm. So no matter how much you want to paddle, no one will make you paddle except yourself. You just finished a huge project. Would you say this is your biggest project yet? By far. In space with Markiplier. It is absolutely bomb the production value in every single aspect of it. I can't even break down every single detail, but it feels flawless. Definitely I see the flaws, but I don't think of them as negatives. I love this concept of what people have been saying, especially in the promotion and then the release of it is like, this looks like a movie or a TV show, not some silly YouTube thing. That perception is still out it's there. It's still there? It's still there, what yeah. The and then when people see it, they're like, well, this is like a movie. You should make a movie. And I'm like, bitch, I made three movies in one movie. That is insane. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's huge. There's like 90 something videos, maybe like 89 videos. It's the biggest thing I made. And it's the most complicated thing. And my first time working with a group, I could talk for hours about just like the process of working with that and not going, I never went to film school. I was doing everything and it was great. Like yeah. that's the thing that people don't realize about YouTube is like we do all this shit ourselves. Yeah. We actually know a lot of it. I didn't know the terminology. I didn't know why I wasn't allowed to move the lights. <laughs> but I definitely like had my foot in the door in terms of all that and I was able to communicate with all the, the people working on the show. It was so complicated and the way we filmed it had to be so optimized. They didn't know what the show was. So much of it was special effects. Yeah. So much of it was done in post that they didn't even know how it was going to look. Yeah. I owe all of that post-production special effects stuff to Corridor Crew because their VFX React series, YouTube circling back again. It's like YouTube helping in ways that you would never know. But it taught me the linguistics I needed mm -hmm. to talk to the VFX supervisor, mm -hmm. to understand what I was asking him, to know whether or not I was asking for impossible things. The only way that this project could have ever been made is because I was able to communicate with everyone mm -hmm. at every level. What is it about doing what you do that brings you the most joy? Seeing the progress I made. With yourself? With your project? All of it. You know, yeah. with myself, with like my audience, seeing that I've actually had kind of an impact on the platform as a whole, I've seen myself progress. And every time I release one of these projects, it is just the most profound sense of fun. It's fun. It's so fun to see people enjoy it. It's so fun to see people really respond. There's people understanding what you make, and then there's people feeling. I spent a day with Markiplier, and one thing that really sits with me is his relationship with fear how he welcomes it. And simply existing doesn't mean that you have an inherent debt to pay off to the universe. Are we spending all of our time worrying and stressed about the things that we could and should be doing? Or is simply existing enough? Oh, there's also people that think I'm I'm like super short. Wait, why? <laughs> because my friends are six foot four. Oh. I'm not saying I'm tall. I'm pretty average height. I'm How five ten. Okay. So I'm average. But people think I'm like really itty bitty. Should we do size comparison? Sure. Yeah, we can do that. Let's see. Oh. 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 See, he's not that small. No. I mean, I could rest my elbow on his How, head. How tall are you? Like five six. Yeah, I'm 5'6", okay. you're what, 5'4"? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs>